Question number 12 is from Wave Optics, Young's Double Slit Experiment. And these are two sources having wavelength 600 nanometer coherent sources separated by this much of distance. This is millimeter in fact and capital D is 3 meter. Here is a screen. This is taken as the origin and the coordinate axis are defined in this manner. Now first thing, region close to O will be dark. That's the first thing. You just see, at O, the path difference between the two waves would be D. So let's try to see that what would be the value of N for this given condition. Because if N is even, then the point will have a bright band. And if N is odd, this point will have a dark band. So N is 2D by lambda. So here comes the lambda is 600 nanometer. And this D, this comes out to be, if I convert it into nanometer, I got to multiply by 10 raised to the power 6. So that would be 6. 3 and there are two zeros, so 3 double zero multiplied by 2, that would be the case. And now here, these two would be cancelling, so this is 3, so 2, zero, zero, 1, that's a value of n, what I'm getting here. And that is corresponding to odd value, so this point will have a dark band, so option number A is correct. Then after that, we need to comment on the locus of the fringe pattern that is formed on the screen. Quite obviously, see, this is the screen and the screen is perpendicular to the line joining S1, S2. So now you could easily see for a given path difference, you would be having a circular fringe and in that circular locus, a given path difference would be constant and the center of that particular circle would be O. That can easily be verified. You just think of a circle and throughout the circle at any given point, the path difference would be the same. So that corresponds to one band. It could be bright, it could be dark. So altogether it had to be circle, but since the screen is half, that would correspond to semicircle. So option number C would be correct. That's about question number 12. Now let's move to question number 13. Question number 13 is again from modern physics and here is that photoelectric setup. Light has wavelength lambda p, p for photon and lambda e is the minimum de Broglie wavelength of electrons reaching anode. That means when the wavelength is minimum, it means the momentum is maximum. That means we are interested on the maximum kinetic energy. So it's something like this. You see when the electrons are ejected from this, the maximum kinetic energy they would be having is this, plus E times V is the additional potential energy. That would be the kinetic energy by the time the electrons reach here, and that's P square by 2m, and P is H by lambda, where lambda E is the de Broglie wavelength. This is the relationship. Now it's Lambda E is approximately halved if D is double. That's incorrect because lambda E has no relation with D. Lambda E decreases with increase in phi. Now see, if you increase phi, overall thing decreases. And overall thing decreases means this denominator has to increase while it says decreasing. So that's wrong. Lambda E increases at same rate as lambda P or lambda PH for this. Now let's see. This is the case when you see you can understand in any given way HC by lambda is greater than phi. So in that situation what we can do is you could hardly write in this way where this particular factor can be neglected because hc by lambda would be greater than phi. But even in that case, lambda e and lambda p, the variation is not same. 
So option number C would be incorrect. Option number D for large potential difference. Now if the potential difference is very very large. You see lambda E is approximately halved if V is made four times. So when the potential difference is very large these option would be or these expressions would be neglected. Now in that case when this is made four times quite obviously lambda E would be half that's approximately and that comes out to be the correct option. So option number D would be the correct option for question number 13.